Today we're going to be pre presenting a Lunch and Learn on professional services tools and customer source. And if you have any questions after the presentation, certainly contact me by uh, emailing me at the address shown in this slide or call my cell phone or the landline extension 102 and I can answer any other further questions you might have. So to begin the presentation, I'd like to uh, come up with the agenda here, which is the first part of the session will be uh, focusing on the newly released professional tools suite overview. And then the second half of the session will be focusing on customer source and the benefits it brings to a client. So before you uh, install the professional tools, uh, we'd like to make you aware that it takes approximately 30 minutes to complete the process. We don't recommend that you do install it yourself, but you certainly can by going to customer source, downloading the code, and put it in, putting it on your system. However, it would be good to contact Terry Armstrong at the phone number shown, or her email address is tarmstrong at premiercomputing.com, or you can contact Andy Casper at the phone number shown, and his email is shown there as well. <coughs> There's a very important part of installing the professional services tool suite, and that is to set up the security appropriate to the role and the user access to the GP system. <clears throat> I won't take time today to discuss the security setup because that in itself is a complete 30 to 40 minute session. So I will uh, provide a uh, professional services tools user manual at the end of this session. If you choose to do so, you can download that off the premiercomputing.com website along with this presentation. Today we're going to focus on what you need to do before you do any of the professional tools um, uh, suite functionality. And the first is back up your data. And we can't express that enough. Uh, there is a process inside of GP I'll swing over to Great Plains right now and just show you. As a user, you do have to have security to do this, but it's called maintenance. And you do a backup, and you will be directed by the system to uh, back up the data for the system that you have in place and the system database. And then you define where you want that backup to go. And then once it's defined, you hit OK, and it does a snapshot of your system before any of the processes are done very important to back up your data. <clears throat> There's also a function inside all the professional tools. It's called validate and import. The validation process is designed to assure that the source information that is being tr uh, changed with any of the modifier or changer tools is already inside the system. And once the validation process is, is done, and I will demonstrate this later, you will get a report and there should be no errors on the validate process. If there are, there will be a listing that will show the fields that need to be fixed. You can go into the file that you're trying to import, fix the data fields, and then continue with your import. <clears throat> we recommend, actually the only recommendation is when you do create a spreadsheet to be imported in through the professional tools, that it's always saved as a text file. And I'll show that later in the presentation as to how to do that. Important information here. If you choose to import data, you will receive a message to validate first. And of course, I just mentioned it ensures that the tool will run properly. If the validation is not complete, the tool will not work, and you'll have to reconfigure your data. There is a compatibility sheet that I have passed out to all attendees at the Lunch and Learn. For those that are online, you can go to the Premier Computing website and download the compatibility sheet, or it's on pages three to five of the user manual. And the compatibility information delineates what modules will be affected by the professional services to a library features and functions. So it's very important to see what's available there in that handout. <coughs> So there's other tools that you can get and uh, do additional things besides the tools that come with Professional Services Tools Library. Uh, one of them is called the Account Reformatter, and that allows you to reformat your general ledger chart of accounts, moving segments from different locations, and uh, that tool 
is uh, can be used from Microsoft or if there's a more extensive need to reformat the chart of accounts then we can put another tool on here called reformatter from corporate renaissance group uh, Microsoft Business Solutions offers also a company splitter tool where the process of splitting off part of a business entity is necessary so we can take based upon categories inside GP and uh, we can split that information off into a separate database or if you're combining companies you can do what they call the company combiner and you can consolidate two companies into a single company so those tools in addition to sales order processing partial kit transfers sales order processing lot overrides can be purchased from Microsoft Professional uh, Services business entity. So let's start out some of the uh, processes using system tools. There's one that's called using the database disabler. At this point I will move back over into GP and I will launch the professional tools library and in this the first one that we'll talk about again is the database disabler many companies create new databases utilizing this tool and they want to leave an old database uh, still active but not accessible by other employees so the way to do that is to click the database disabler and hit next and then click the databases in this screen that's showing here as the ones you want to disable and no longer have access to. What that does is when somebody tries to sign into Dynamics and they go to user company and they do a drop down here, those databases will no longer be accessible in the drop down. So they cannot access the data, but you still have an archive copy for review and data reporting on historical information. Another tool is called the copy of the shortcuts and uh, how that works is so if you're coming along you log into the shortcut copy and you hit next what you're doing here in this uh, screen is you are copying the shortcut that has been set up for a specific person like myself Rob Gillespie I'm going to copy all of my shortcuts to a new user ID and let's just say it's Premier Consultant and once that is assigned and set you'll just hit the copy command and it copies the shortcuts. Now to make sure you understand what that is I'll pop back over to GP. The shortcuts we're referring to are all the shortcuts that show up here on the left side of the screen. So if I've set these up for myself and I want to copy that over to another user I can do that and uh, that's the copy shortcuts command. There's another tool using the tool kit that's underneath the professional uh, services tools. You get to a, a greater depth of uh, usability as far as maintaining the database. So what this is, occasionally, not too often, but once in a while, the main index for your general ledger can uh, end up getting uh, corrupted, uh, power fluctuation, uh, bad backup, something could cause that. So in the professional tools suite you now have the ability to click on the rebuild of the general ledger index table. Also in this there's a recreate SQL objects and I'll go to this one and show this in a little bit more depth. Here you have the opportunity to select the series out of GP whether it's financial, company, inventory, payroll, purchasing sales and so forth and based upon the series that you select you can now uh, update and recreate recreate dexterity stored procedures for selected tables so I've selected a table up in this up, upper area so if I were to come down and do a perform selected maintenance on this table then I would go ahead and recreate the stored procedure specific to that table now there's another couple of things here you should know. There is a timeout, a stored procedure timeout, and a report timeout. You would probably want to set a timeout parameter if your database is a very large database, say 200 gig or larger, you would probably want to time this out after no more than 15 minutes to maybe 30 minutes. Um, if it's a small database, just leave it zero so it'll just 
run very quickly and, and uh, get the process done. So set the time out so that if the process goes too long, it won't uh, slow down your GP system for other people trying to process uh, orders or anything else inside the system. Also, do not set the debug to be turned on. What happens if you, if you absolutely necessary, it's necessary to turn the debug on so you can get a trace file of what's going on and turn it on, but immediately come in and turn this off because it will build a very large database of all of the trace that goes on during the rebuild. And you have to have space on your server for that file to grow. So we recommend you leave it turned off. So we can create the deck stored procedures uh, by table, or we can also recreate them by selected series. So either way works. I'm up in a series right now, and tables you can pull down here in the, the table uh, drop down. Taking it to the next level, you can rebuild the indexes for a selected table, and you can also rebuild the indexes for selected series. Same process that is done for recreating the DEX procedures is done in this manner, and you just click the one you want, select your tables and series here, and hit the, uh, perform the selected maintenance. There's another one here in the tools, it's called Recreate Selected Tables. And uh, what that does, if somehow or another a table gets corrected and uh, you need to recreate that table, you can do so and do it very quickly. There's an option here to recreate the table and recreate data for the selected table. So just so you know, if you create the selected table, it can overwrite your data. And it may be that that's exactly what you want to do, but if you do not want to override the data, or I'm sorry, delete the data, then you will create the table and then bring back in the data so it's now in the form it was before. The last one under the system diagnostics tool is the re-identify. They call it re-indent, but it's re-identify. So what this is, is somebody goes out and does a uh, process inside Great Plains of, say, for instance, removing applied payments so they can uh, send out a statement that doesn't have all the payments showing up, then that leaves uh, large gaps in the sequence of the identifier. And so what you would want to do is re-indent for selected tables or re-indent for selected series. Basically, it is uh, sort of like re-indexing your hard drive on a PC. You're just recovering uh, space has been taken up by blanks in the database by re-identifying in this manner. So that's basically uh, all there is and using the system tools called Toolkit. And uh, the next one in the series is using um, the login user generator. Actually, we're not going to talk about that today. Um, there's some information I need to gather, and I'll put that on the website as well regarding this. But on the one here that I've just pulled up on the screen, it's called Using Menu Inquiry Utilities. In many cases, people want to know what is behind the menu, the launch sequence, and so forth. So if you'll click this Menu Inquiry Utility in Next, it'll bring up the menu associated with the dynamic system that you've installed. So each and every one of these menus is your right-click menus that are traditionally, and I'll just show you here, as you come into GP, here's your transaction menus, right-click menus, inquiry menus, reports menus, and cards menu. So those are the menus. And so behind the menu inquiry, you notice if I were to just pick purchasing, I've got transactions by vendor, transactions by document. As you come down here, as you highlight one of these menus, you'll notice what happens. It says, tool tip, payables transaction inquiry document. Form that will be opened is this one. The security comes from that same form. And if you drill a little deeper on the gears, it'll actually execute the command. So you'll actually see the menu that is opened by the logic that's built into the menuing inside Dynamics. So that's that tool. Many people express a desire to be able to see behind the scenes, and that's what that's all about.